Hey Budget Gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as I give you an early October garden tour. So let's go. So we're gonna start the tour on the south side of my house where this is one of two areas of my yard that get part sun to full sun. The hydrangeas are now at their prime pink color. You can see that right here, this is still a white blossom on this hydrangea, but otherwise they have that beautiful pink color, which I absolutely love this time of year. I'm definitely planning to take cuttings from my hydrangeas this winter because I really want to do a bunch of hardwood cuttings. It gives me something to do during the winter months and something to look forward to next spring and next summer. The lungwort over here is just so beautiful this time of year. I just love the spots. It just adds a lot of interest to the garden. And look how pretty the echinacea or coneflower is. I love that they're still blooming, although a bunch of them have gone to seed and the birds have enjoyed the seeds from them. The blue lobelia have also gone by, but they're still adding some color to the garden. I'm looking forward to collecting the seeds from those pretty soon. A lot of people don't like the look of the daylilies during this time of year. And although I don't enjoy the look, I really could be better about keeping it deadheaded and pulling out the old pieces that have gone by. Next year, I'm gonna to try to be better about that. But you can see just how pretty some of the colors are in this area. I have some open spots here where I removed some daylilies a little while ago. I'm planning to put some mums in here in the springtime just to add a little bit of color to this bed. There is still a lot to do in the garden from now until the snow starts falling. I need to cut back all my daylilies as well as any other perennials that are in this bed. I also need to remove all the cages that are around my peonies. A lot to do, but I look forward to this time of year. On many of the trees, I have hanging baskets and all those hanging baskets need to be taken down and they have lamium in them as well as creeping jenny. I need to get those potted up and put in my plant nursery so that they're ready to go for next year for my containers and pots. What a pleasant surprise when it's October and I have some lilacs that are in bloom. This is a Miss Kim lilac and I have a couple of blossoms on a few of my lilacs, which is very exciting. Can you believe that this is just one annual right here? This is a salvia that seeded itself in my rose garden and I moved it here a few months ago and it's just so pretty. I want more of these next year and I will absolutely be collecting the seeds off of them to ensure that I have plenty of this all around my yard. What a joy to have a clematis blooming again this time of year. So pretty and I am thoroughly enjoying it. 
And here's a different angle of this flower bed. I recently got this pot for where my garage doors are, and I really think it just looks so pretty. I'm going to try to overwinter it and see if I can get some of the plants to survive our harsh cold winters. As we continue our tour on the south side of my house, it's amazing just how things change from early spring through the summer and then into the fall. I'm going to take you in for a closer look so that you can see what's looking especially beautiful in this flower bed. Right here is a tall ornamental grass or a miscanthus. And if you look closely, you can see that it's just starting to send out its plumes. It's going to look beautiful by the next time I do a garden tour for you. Over here is Joe Pieweed, and it still looks very pretty. The blossoms are starting to fade, but I love this color this time of year. The white alyssum is still blooming and it looks very pretty. And right near it, we have a whole bunch of dianthus. We have some white colored dianthus, which is not currently blooming over here. But then right near it is this purple colored dianthus. I love that it's such a workhorse and blooms from early spring through the summer into the fall. I have two perennial mums here, and I just think both of them are gorgeous. I moved them here from an old arborvitae bed, and they were not getting enough water, they were not getting enough sun, but they are loving life here. And you know me, I surely will be dividing those first thing in the spring. I wanna move those around my yard. I have some cosmos that self-seeded itself and honestly I'm loving the color. I think it's very pretty and adds some whimsy to this bed. As we move along this way, you can see that the pattern repeats itself. We have the white alyssum, and then we have a ton of dianthus over here, and then a different kind of dianthus over here. I love this time of year. I just think the colors just really pop. Typically during the month of October, we are due for a frost. I will be lifting this geranium here, as well as this geranium over here. And I will be overwintering them indoors in my basement. I'll be sure to show you how I go about doing that. Here on the south side is where my side porch is. I really enjoy decorating it 
during the different seasons of the year. Let me take you in for a closer look so we can see what's on there. I did a video recently showing you how I switched out my porch from summer to fall. If you haven't checked it out, please check out that video. It might give you some inspiration and some ideas. We've changed this container pot out a number of times during the season. And I really enjoy how it's looking. I think it looks very pretty this time of year. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe that this pot right here was created from plants that I started from seed under my grow lights. And if you can believe it, all the impatiens, as well as the wax begonia in the center, are from seeds that I collected last year. I definitely love collecting seeds from my plants, and I've been creating videos showing you how to collect seeds from all the different plants that I can think of, including the impatiens as well as begonias. So pretty. Here's another pot right here filled with impatiens as well as wax begonia. And again, all those plants were plants that I started from seed. This pot right here is starting to go by. It has dahlias that I started from seed a few years ago, which created tubers, and then I was able to overwinter the tubers from this dahlia. And I'm planning on collecting the seeds from it. And at the base of the dahlia pot, are some azuratum. Again, I collected the seeds last year, grew the plant under my grow lights, and I just love the color of the purple next to the yellow. We've changed out these window boxes on my side porch a number of times. And although I'm letting things just do their thing at this point, I am planning on collecting the seeds from this coleus right here. It definitely has seed pods on there that are ripe and for the picking. And here's another pot that we've changed a few times as well. I have enjoyed collecting seeds off of that pink wax begonia as well. As we leave the side porch, we are now going towards the old arborvitae bed. And if you're new to my channel, 
I'll pop up on the screen why I call this the old Arborvitae bed. But we did a transformation of it this spring and it just looks so pretty in the summer. It's now past its prime, but there's still some beauty left in there. One of my tasks for today is to clean the bird bath, but just check out, there's still some beautiful color in this bed. I can't believe how much the ajuga in the center has grown since the springtime. It looks so beautiful. We've switched out these raised beds a few times this year, and I've been very pleased with how they've held up. We've had a ton of raspberries that we've been picking, as well as strawberries right in here. If you look very carefully, there are some mini strawberries right in here. I do feel that mini strawberries have a place in this world. I think they'd be really nice on a salad. Plus, I just like to come out here and nibble on them whenever I can. Unfortunately, I did not get my tomatoes in the ground this year. I donated all my tomato plants, but I did have some tomatoes that self-seeded themselves in my compost area. Check it out. They're all in this area here, over there, and in the back there. And I've been harvesting off them for at least a month and a half now. All right, let's leave the south side of my house and let's head towards the east. It's sad to see all these hanging baskets go, but it is that time of year. I've never really put anything in them for the fall or the winter. I'm considering maybe doing some container pots this year for the winter months. And I'm so glad that we added some hosta around this tree here, as well as this tree here, just to continue the pattern that we already had around those two trees. The hosta bed is still looking great, and it is full, which I'm very excited about. A few years ago, there wasn't much going on in this bed, so it really has changed over the last many years. Do you remember when we put this container pot together? I think it looks very pretty. It's so simple and yet beautiful. And it didn't cost me hardly anything. This is a perennial that's gonna get potted up and I'm gonna divide it so that I have plenty more for next year for my pots and containers. And then again, here are a bunch of impatiens that were started from seed. Very simple yet very pretty.
as we leave the hosta bed up there at the base, along the side here, are a bunch of lung wart. I'm definitely looking forward to taking from that area and I want to continue the pattern around the end of the bed here. And I also want to be able to use some of the lung wart in other areas of my yard. We recently did a project here and added some pops of color, some reds and some lime greens. And I really am happy with how that came out. We've done a lot of projects in this area here with removing some shrubby type things and just moving around perennials. It's looking nice and clean and it is ready for the winter and then to be filled in with a bunch of annuals towards the front of it come next spring. Also worth mentioning is that irrigation has now been added to this bed, so it will be very happy once things start coming alive again after the winter months. We recently also weeded this area here and divided, moved, planted a bunch of perennials. Some beautiful things in here. I'm very pleased with how the rose bed is looking this time of year. There are still some beautiful pops of color in here.
here is my raised vegetable garden in my backyard. This time of year, everything is just kind of slowing down. We have grapes over here and a whole bunch of asparagus in the center. All the green beans have been pulled. Those were towards the front. Here's a stray tomato seedling and it showed up pretty late in the season, so I'm doubtful that it'll produce too many tomatoes, although I do see some at the base. And right over in the back there where there's a trellis, we had a ton of cucumbers. It was a great year for us for cucumbers. Towards the back here, we had a ton of peas in the springtime, and we enjoyed those as well. Look how pretty these aster are. They are a perennial here in our zone, and they just provide such a nice pop of color. I really like this color of aster, and I plan on dividing and moving this around in other areas of my yard. Fall in New England is very beautiful, and it is fun to see the leaves fall. I like leaves because I use them in my compost. Wait until this year when my whole entire lawn is blanketed with leaves. I'll show you how to turn leaves into beautiful compost, also known as black gold. Although there's not a lot of color in this particular bed, it is packed with a bunch of hookara or coral bells right towards the front of the bed which is a great place for me to take from next year when I start moving and dividing perennials around. I am really looking forward to next year. There is so much potential where the lawn ends and where the woods begin. These are areas that were neglected this year, but next year, game on. I'm looking really forward to working on those areas. I started a bunch of Dusty Miller from seed, as well as Lobelia and Alyssum. They were all started under my grow lights this past winter. And I've been busy collecting the seeds off of many of these plants, so I don't need to buy them again. Up along the front walkway, 
I am loving the color that the PJM and Olga are giving during the fall time. And things are still looking pretty good down here towards the front of this bed. I'm definitely letting all of my dahlia just do their thing. I've stopped deadheading them and I'm letting them go to seed so that I can collect their seeds and then I will be lifting them and storing them once a frost hits them. This time of year, I give up on cleaning my pond because there are just so many other projects to be done around the yard. And pretty soon I'm gonna to have to remove the pump anyway. So I'm focused on other things, but around the pond is looking very pretty. It's amazing how long the English daisies bloom for. And while they can be a little invasive, and they're dropping their seeds everywhere. I do think they're very sweet. I like the little pops of color that they give. And I just have a ton of plants that I can then divide, move around the yard, or add to my backyard plant nursery. I am still very busy in my backyard plant nursery and I showed you in a previous video how I was creating some new rows and healing in plants over here. So that project is all done. And right now my main focus is down over around the corner here. I'm getting close to running out of time but I have still been very busy with dividing a bunch of perennials that I basically got from the holding bed that's mine over in this corner over here of the nursery. And I am working fast and furiously to empty out this area, divide, pot up plants that are in there, and then I am going to create a little bit larger bed over in this area here, and then get all of these plants down over here, planted back up in this section. Lots to do, but it's getting done. Right near my driveway is another beautiful hydrangea. It's a little shady in this area, but it still looks very beautiful.
here on the west side of my house, I have a bed that I call the lilac bed. We have a lilac tree right there. And there are a bunch of things tucked into this bed. But what's looking very nice right now are the aster and the mums.